If you are new to computer graphics, you might be wondering whether you need to own a strong machine to be able to do different things and work smoothly. In this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the subject while breaking it down so we can get a better idea of what we're going to talk about. The level of experience. For beginners, if you are a beginner, meaning you are just starting out or trying this new thing called 3D modeling and animation, then you don't have to worry about what kind of computer you are using. Because an average computer nowadays can run any 3D software such as Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D or Max easily. You will be able to create and model geometry easily without any problems. Hopefully you can texture stuff and animate simple stuff as well. But if you decide that this is going to be your thing and you are willing to become better and potentially start working in computer graphics fields, then you have to consider upgrading your hardware as soon as you can afford it. This leads us to the next point. For professionals. When you spend a few years in 3D computer graphics, especially if it is a source of income for you, even if it is a part-time thing, you have to upgrade hardware and invest in your machine to the best of your ability. This is the case because as a professional, you usually first work on complex stuff that can push your machine to its limits. Second, professionals are under deadline most of the time, which means faster is always better. Actually, I don't even have to tell you this if you have clients and stuff, because the demand of the job will naturally push you to upgrade to something that will allow you to do your job faster and smoothly. For studios. If you are working in a studio, your machine's power depends on what type of game, movie, or any project you are working on. For example, AAA video games and blockbuster movie productions require very high specs to run. So artists working on those projects often have CPUs and graphic cards that are top of the line, and usually the most recent in the market. But if a studio is not working on something complicated or big, then they can still use whatever they can find and they will be just fine. Also, hardware depends on what field you are in right now or willing to work in in the future, which takes us to the next point. Now I will try to rate industries based on how much computer power you will need on average to do the job. Just to be clear, even the fields that don't require strong machines sometimes need them. So we're going to talk about the averages here, not the extreme cases. Architecture. Generally speaking, architects can get away working with average to relatively strong machines, but most of them would not need very expensive rigs. I mean, those that cost thousands of dollars unless it is going to be a big project that requires a huge computing power or if the work revolves mostly around rendering, which is a bottomless pit. Motion graphics. Motion designers need at least an above average CPU and graphics cards. But if you want to work on your project smoothly, it is always better to have at least a CPU and GPU that is good. I mean very good. Game development. Making video games, especially AAA, is going to require strong computers because usually game artists need to sculpt characters, monsters, and other stuff with millions of polygons in addition to creating huge levels with a lot of details. And this is going to need all to run in real time. And of course, in addition to all the necessary effects and characters running within those environments. But on the other hand, mobile game development is not demanding or hardware intensive. Also, the work of game artists is endless. So small delays over time will lead to a huge chunk of time that is going to be wasted over the long run. VFX. By far, I would say that there is no category of computer graphics that is more demanding than VFX work, especially on big projects. This is the case for many reasons. First of all, when creating characters and environments or monsters, they have to be super detailed and highly realistic. This requires putting tens of millions of polygons to reach the level they are looking for. Also, when they create textures and when they do texture painting work, it has to be huge most of the time. Like at least 8K or 16K across multiple UDMs to show all the details, especially when close-up shots are required. Of course, the most demanding thing in VFX is running simulations that can reach sometimes hundreds of millions or even billions of particles. So it is natural to see VFX artists working with machines that cost many thousands of dollars. Even if you are a beginner in this field, you can't learn more complex stuff and make more progress unless you have access to a very strong machine. This is the case if you don't want to waste a lot of your time. Now we will try to break down how demanding 3D work is based on tasks or different parts of the production pipeline. 3D modeling. I would say 3D modeling is relatively the least demanding task in 3D, especially as a beginner. You will be able to work on your first modeling projects using an average laptop, and you can do this easily without any problems. But as you start working on complex projects and big environments, the need for a better computer or an upgrade is necessary. 
sculpting. This is one of the few things in 3D that doesn't give you a lot of room for using a weak or an average machine. As you start sculpting, you will quickly start to notice that your computer doesn't handle the demand of this task properly, especially as you start adding more subdivisions to your mesh. Actually, you can do simple stuff, but you can't go very far unless you have a very good computer. Actually, even a very good computer has its limits with sculpting. This is the case if you enter the millions of polygons territory. That's why you have to be very careful and use your resources properly. Texture painting. Texture painting is actually one of the new things in computer graphics because it wasn't popular even 10 years ago, since many industries used Photoshop for creating textures for the most part. Now with great software such as Substance Painter, creating textures in real time in a 3D viewport is a common thing nowadays. Actually, it is getting better and easier than ever before. But the thing is, it is very demanding, especially when it comes to graphics cards. So, you will at least need an external graphics card to do this type of work properly if you are new. If your job includes working on extremely detailed textures for video games or for VFX, then you will need a very good graphics card. I would say something that costs at least $300 to $400 for the cart alone. Animation Animation is not extremely demanding, especially in the beginning. But like anything in computer graphics, with bigger projects, the need for powerful hardware will arise. Animation, I believe, for the most part is CPU intensive. So if anything, you need to make sure that you're gonna have very good CPU, especially if you have a limited budget. Rendering Rendering is actually extremely demanding and needs a really good machine, no matter what you do, whether it be architecture, design, VFX, creative video games, or anything else for that matter. You can do decent renders in a few hours using an average machine. But if you don't want to lose your sanity, I highly recommend that you invest in hardware from time to time. You want to do this because you want to stay on top of your game. Simulation and Dynamics just like rendering, creating simulations and dynamics is something that is going to require a very flexible and strong machine. The curve is very steep on this one, because the smallest attempts to do something complicated can crash your average computer, so you have to try it carefully and march your limited machine resources with intelligence. Final thoughts. I know that new people need to ask these questions of whether 3D modeling and animation and stuff need a strong computer, and the simple answer is yes and no. So at the beginning, if you are completely new to computer graphics, you need to use whatever you have at your disposal because you are not sure whether you want to do this thing or not. But if you are sure that you are in, then I highly recommend investing as soon as possible because it is very worth it for the next reasons. The speed that comes with top-notch hardware is unbelievable. It makes you happy for the first few days, especially if you suffered from using an average computer for years. You will feel like driving a Ferrari for the first time. Everything you do in your work becomes astronomically more efficient and enjoyable. Also, comfort and keeping your brain cells is one of the most important benefits of having to do an upgrade or buying a new computer. You will start focusing on being creative rather than being mad or worried all the time about the things that you're going to do creating art. Art is supposed to be fun, not a chore. And to do this, you need to have a very good computer. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.